Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Welcome to another episode of Friendly Friday. This week we're taking a look at a mono blue self mill deck in modern and one of the big payoff cards for a self mill deck is Scab Ruinator, a 3 mana 5-6 with flying that you can cast from your graveyard but as an additional cost to cast Scab Ruinator, whether it be from your hand or from your graveyard, you need to exile 3 creature cards from your graveyard. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck to see how we get the Scab Ruinator and all those creature cards in our graveyard. And of course to support Scab Ruinator the deck is mostly just lands and creatures, so you won't see any non-creature spells in the main deck. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck, starting out with two copies of Drowner Initiate, a 1 mana 1-1 one one that says whenever a player casts a blue spell, you can pay 1 generic mana and if you do, target player puts the top 2 cards of their library into their graveyard, so most of the time you will be targeting yourself with the Drowner Initiate to try and put Scab Ruinator and creatures in your graveyard. Next up we have 4 copies of Hedron Crab, which is probably the most important mill card in our deck. A 1 mana 2 with Landfall, so when a land enters the battlefield under our control, we can have target player put the top 3 cards of their library into their graveyard, so mills for 3 every time, and of course works very well with fetch lands, as then you get 2 triggers every time. Next up we have 4 copies of Jace's Phantasm, which is a 1 mana 1-1 one, one flyer, but Jace's Phantasm gets plus 4 plus 4 as long as an opponent has 10 or more cards in his or her graveyard. So Jace's Phantasm doesn't care about your own graveyard, but only about the opponent's graveyard. So if you have a draw with multiple Jace's Phantasms, you might be better off milling the opponent first with your Hedron Crabs and Drowner Initiates, rather than milling yourself first. But uh, normally, you care about milling yourself more first, and then later in the game the opponent might also naturally accumulate a lot of cards in their graveyard and you might only need to dedicate one or two Hedron Crab triggers to get the Jace's Phantasm up to a 5-5 which of course can close out the game rather quickly. Next up we have four copies of Mausoleum Wanderer, a 1 mana 1-1 one, one flyer that's a spirit and when another spirit enters the battlefield under our control the Wanderer gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn and we can sacrifice a Wanderer to counter target instant or sorcery unless the opponent pays X where X is the Wanderer's power but most of the time that's just going to be 1. And very similarly to the Muslim Wanderer, we also have three copies of Judge's Familiar, which is a 1 mana 1-1 one, one flyer that we can sacrifice to counter target instant or sorcery spell unless the opponent pays 1. So the Wanderer is slightly better since playing additional copies will give them plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn, so we can get in for a bit more damage. Next up we have four copies of Minister of Inquiries, a 1 mana 1-2 one, that generates 2 energy when he enters the battlefield, and we can tap the Minister, pay an energy and mill target player for 3 cards, so another nice self-mill effect. And our final one drop in the deck is Sage of Epitir, a 1 mana 1-1 one, one, that when he enters the battlefield, we get to look at the top 4 cards of our library and rearrange them in any order. So it doesn't provide any card advantage, but provides this weird kind of card selection that also works nicely with our self-mill effects, since we can just stack those 4 cards in such a way that if we mill the top 2 or 3 cards of our library, we end up with the only card we actually want to draw. Next up we have 4 copies of Smuggler Sculptor, a 2 mana 3-3 vehicle with crew 1, so we can crew it with any creature in our deck except for Hedron Crab. And when the Smuggler Sculptor attacks we get to draw a card and then discard a card, so that's also a nice loot effect to help us put more creatures in a graveyard, perhaps ditch a Scab Ruinator so we can cast them from the graveyard instead. Just a very useful effect in general and also helps us kill the opponent. Then of course we have our 4 copies of Scab Ruinator, which is our primary win condition in the deck. Next up we have 4 copies of Ninja of the Deep Hours, a 4 mana 2-2 two -two, but it also has a ninjutsu for just 1 and a blue which means we can return an unblocked attacking creature we control back to our hand and then put into play the Ninja of the Deep Hours tapped and attacking and then when the Ninja of the Deep Hours deals combat damage to an opponent we can draw a card so that's a very powerful effect especially in combination with all our small evasive blue creatures that we can easily return to our hand and then replay for just a single mana. And last but not least, we have 4 copies of Sky Hussar, the reason why we're splashing white, a 5 mana 4-3 with flying. When the Sky Hussar enters the battlefield, we get to untap all our creatures, but that's not the important part. The important part about Sky Hussar is the forecast ability. So once every turn during our upkeep, if we want to, we can reveal Sky Hussar from our hand, tap 2 untapped white and or blue creatures we control to draw a card. So that's a very nice way to gain incremental card advantage in our deck, since we have so many of these cheap blue creatures that we can easily run out and then tap down during our upkeep. Cards like Hedron Crab, which can't crew the Smuggler's Copter anyways, we certainly don't mind tapping down for a turn, and other 1-1s, which may not be able to attack anyways. 
Then taking a look at our mana base, we have 4 Flooded Strands, which are fetch lands to go with our Hedron Crab to trigger landfall twice, along with 11 Islands and 2 Hallowed Fountain, in case we need to hardcast a Sky Hussar. And we also have 2 copies of Oboro, Palace in the Clouds, which is a legendary land, so we don't want to have too many copies, but we can pay 1 mana to return Oboro to our hand from play, so that means that it's another way to re-trigger landfall triggers on Hedron Crab, in case we run out of land drops to play. Then quickly going over the sideboard, we have two copies of Ceremonious Rejection to counter colorless spells, one Dispel to counter instance, four copies of Spreading Seas to mess up the mana of the Tron decks, two copies of Unified Will to counter combo decks that don't have many creatures, two copies of Kira Great Class Spinner, which is another spirit that can pump up the Wanderer, but more importantly it protects our creatures from spot removal spells against removal heavy decks, 2 copies of Gutshot in case we need some removal against creature combo decks, and finally 2 copies of Thorn of Amethyst, which makes non-creature spells cost 1 mana more to cast, which is great against spell-heavy decks. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, from a play, and this hand seems acceptable, we're missing our second land drop is a major problem here, but even if we miss on a land drop for a couple turns, it's not the end of the world I guess, so I'll keep and I'll lead with the Wanderer here, I think. And then if we draw land, we can still play the Hedron Crab before playing the land to mill ourselves. Or we can just go for the Ninja right away. Opponent with an Elvish Mystic. Alright, so if we are up against the Elves deck, that's probably not a great matchup since we have uh, very little in the way of interaction. And the Elf deck is probably faster than we are. So let's play the Crab. Play Flood of Strands and start milling ourselves. Just get a basic island here, I think. Mill ourselves again and then play the Drowner Initiates. So it looks like we already have three creatures in the graveyard at least. And attack for one. So this turn we could have also gone for the Ninja instead. But I think we wanted to get the Hedron Crab online first. Another Elvish Mystic. Into Lanoir Elves. But no land. Let's draw. Judge is familiar. So here it's probably fine to run out the Ninja. And I will offer the trade initiate for an Elf here. Don't think our opponent will block. Alright, so let's flash in the ninja, returning the drowner I think, keeping the wanderer in play seems more important. Draw a card with the ninja, find another hedron crab, alright, so really looking for that third land now, so we can play the scab, start milling ourselves even more with hedron crabs, and maybe start milling the opponents so we get uh, Jace's phantasm online. There's an elvish arch druid, so that's scary. Let's draw. Can maybe help us find a third land, but uh, I guess that's reasonable here. Can play the Sage, set up the top of our deck to have a land on top. Hopefully. Well, it looks like uh, it's all spells. Which of these do we want to draw? Sky Hussar isn't bad since that can help us draw more cards. So next turn, I guess we want to either play the second Sage to look for a land once again. But I think we're better off just playing a Smuggler Sculptor then, and uh, going to the skies. Put the Phantasm on the bottom, followed by the Sage, followed by a Smuggler Sculptor, and then now I want to draw the Sky Hussar, since I don't think our opponent's going to block the Ninja. Alright, so we get to draw the Sky Hussar, so we get to use it on upkeep. And then now, I guess play the Hedron Crab. which we don't mind tapping down with the Sky Hussar. Alright, Paradox Engine. That's scary. This opponent gets to make even more mana here by untapping all their creatures. So we might just be dead here.
Elvish Visionary, sure. And an Urborg, so they're playing black as well. And Azuri, yep, yeah, that's gonna be game. So now they can use the Overrun ability on Azuri a couple times. And uh, can't beat that. So not a traditional elf deck, but uh, Paradox Engine gets the job done here. So Azuri gives everyone plus 3 plus 3 and Trample at the end of turn. And they can do that at least once again. And looks like they can do it a third time. Alright, looks like they're happy just doing it twice. Attacking with everyone and then we're more than that here. Alright, so just go to the sideboard. Where we don't have a ton of tools for this matchup. Certainly one of the more difficult matchups I think for our deck. A creature heavy combo deck. So we do get to bring in gut shots at least. To maybe snipe an elf early on. And uh think that's about it. We could also consider Dispel to counter a Collected Company or Court of Calling. And I don't think Unified Will is going to be very useful since the opponent's likely to have more creatures than we have. What do we take out? I think the Initiate's going to be too slow. Opponent also doesn't have any blue cards we can uh, take advantage of. Maybe cut a Judge's Familiar since it's unlikely to counter anything when the opponent's making that much mana. Alright, let's try this. Would like to be on the play. And this hand seems okay. Lots of mill effects. We've got the ninja that we could play on turn two. So I think we'll lead with the Minister of Increase here to start milling ourselves instead of going for the ninja plan. Just because I think the ninja plan, while fine usually, is not going to be good enough here against the elf deck most of the time. So we'd rather try and find the scab ruinator as quickly as possible, which means playing the minister here. And then next turn we can go Sage plus Minister, try to set up our draw with our mill effects. And maybe later we can uh, sneak in the ninja. And I guess playing the minister here is still fine with the ninja plan, since we get two free energy, since the opponent's unlikely to block the minister. So in that regard, it might be even better than just playing the judge's familiar, even though it has flying. So definitely an interesting decision coming up. Do we go for the ninja or do we go for anything else? The spell is a nice pickup. Alright, I think I actually like going for the nin ninja here, so let's attack. And if your opponent blocks, that's also acceptable, of course. Alright, ninjutsu it up. And draw a card. Alright, another Obora is a little awkward here since it's legendary, but we can still flow the mana for a turn, kind of use it as a lotus petal. Heritage Druids into Lanowar Elves. Alright, at least they can't use the Druid this turn, unless they have a land. They don't. Straw. Definitely offering the trade here. So let us attack. And then we're probably just gonna go with double Minister, keep up the spell for a cord or Collected Company. Opponent takes it, we draw. Alright, Hedron Crab, nice. So now we can go Hedron Crab, Sage, land minister but then we don't keep up the spell i think i still like playing the sage here to set up or uh, draw with the hedron crab somewhat so let's play sage first all right so don't really need the hallowed fountain don't need more sages but i am in interested in the smuggler sculptor we'll put the smuggler sculptor on the bottom here followed by everything else then play the hedron crab Play the lands and mill ourselves for three. Putting those sages and hallowed fountain in our graveyard. And then we have to decide if we want to keep up the spell or play the minister. I think we play the minister here. Hope our opponent doesn't go for our company next turn. Since we do need to develop our board. It's likely that they still play something like an arch druid or azuri right now. So keeping up the spell wouldn't help there. Opponent using the druid's ability to tap three mana for an arch druid. Alright, it's not a company. Untap, draw the Smuggler Sculptor. Think we start by milling ourselves with the Minister. See if we can maybe find a Scab Ruinator. Alright, just more Smuggler Sculptors. So let's attack with a Ninja. Draw a card. Another Minister. And then play the Smuggler Sculptor using a Boro. 
and then I think we play the Oboro, sacrificing the first one, mill ourselves for three, play Minister, still keep up the spell. All right, still no Scabruinators, so let's play the Minister. And say go. And we can crew the Copter on defense here, so your opponent can't attack us with the small elves. And this spell is going to be more useful here than a Judge's Familiar, just because your opponent now has the Arch Druid and access to a lot of mana. Paradox Engine is not an instant, as it turns out. Well, if they have another Azuri here, we might just be dead once again. But uh, not much we can do about that one. Elvish Visionary, sure. Well, for being stuck on one land, our opponent's doing a lot of things. Alright, there's a second land. And the growing rights of Itlamok. Okay, that's also not an instant we can counter. Who knows, the opponent might not even have Collected Company or Court of Calling. Opponent makes 9 mana. And lead the Stampede is also not an instant. Well, I guess uh, that's their plan, just lead the Stampede to find Azuri. Let's see what they reveal here. Shaman of the Pack, no black mana yet though. And then uh, an Elvish Visionary as well, which explains the Urborg in the first game. They've already played the land for the turn, so it looks like they're just going to add an Elvish Mystic, which leaves them with Visionary double Shaman in hand. So they can make a bunch of mana, play the Visionary, and hopefully this turn doesn't end with Azuri. Alright, there's a Visionary. And a second Paradox Engine, sure. It's even a Legendary Artifact, so they can't have two of them in play. Alright, looks like they're out of uh, place here. They could attack us for a bunch, but we still get to block with the Copter. Idlamok transforms, so they have a Gaia's Cradle now. Alright, let's draw. Find a Wanderer. So not much we can do here besides mill ourselves with the Ministers. Maybe get an attack in with the Copter, but then we're also getting attacked back for a bunch. Which isn't great. So I think our best hope is finding a Scab Ruinator. And then keeping the Copter on defense. So let's mill ourselves with one Minister. Alright, finds Gut Shots. It's a bit too late for that one. So I think we mill with the second Minister as well. And alright, there's a Scab Ruinator. Which we can play here. And that does leave the shields down on the spell, but I don't think our opponent has the company or cord here. Scab Ruinator's in play, and say go. I think we need to keep the Copter on defense here, unfortunately. Otherwise we take too much damage from these 2-2 creatures. So shields down on the spell. There's a Woodland Cemetery, so they do get to play one Shaman here, which can do a grand total of 8 damage. Opponent might as well make a whole bunch of mana first. So there's Shaman. At least they don't get to untap their Woodland Cemetery, so they don't get to play the second Shaman. Omnath Locus of Mana. So green mana doesn't empty from their mana pool and gets plus one plus one for each green mana in their mana pool. Yep, that, uh, that's going to be a pretty big guy. At least it doesn't have Trample. So we can chum block it with one of our smaller creatures. So our opponent's got all the mana in the world. No attacks at least. So we get to untap. This uh, Dispel isn't looking great. Our opponent might just not have the Cord or Company in their deck. Jace's Phantasm. So we could start milling the opponents to maybe grow the Phantasm. Definitely need to keep uh, some of our creatures on defense here, but let's see. We could attack for 8, and then for 8 again, which is lethal in the air. Can we survive an attack, though, is a question, since they do have the second Shaman in their hand, which is going to deal, uh, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 damage. So yeah, I don't think we can actually afford to make any attacks. Yeah, we can't even attack with the Scab Ruinator, I think. So I think we still play the Phantasm here. Play the Minister. And I guess that means we play the Wanderer, which gives us another flyer also to attack with. 
So we might have lethal next turn if our opponent doesn't kill us. Since we have 5, 10, 13, 14 in the air. So if they don't force us to make some chumps, we might be able to sneak in a win. But it's going to be close. Overgrown Tomb untapped. Does that mean they have two shamans in hand? Or is this a giant Genesis wave or Torment of Hailfire? Alright, it is a Torment of Hailfire actually. X equals 39. So that's going to do it here. And yeah, there's no way we can counter this with the Wanderer. And uh, it's not an instant, so the spell wouldn't have helped. So yeah, that's going to be game. Not going to click through it all, but uh, yeah, let's move on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And this hand is pretty strange with all these Sages, but thanks to the Drowner I think it's keepable since we get to kind of control the top. So let's lead with the Sage to set up our first draw. Alright, the Ninja is actually a nice one here. I think we want to draw the Ninja for our next draw step. Followed by the Island. Followed by Minister. So the Judge is familiar last. So next turn we can actually Ninjutsu the Sage, which is also pretty nice since then we get the trigger back when we replay the Sage. Opponent with Mountain into Flameblade Adapt, so this could be the Hollow One deck. Alright, so it looks like we actually don't get to Ninjutsu here, unfortunately. So instead I'm gonna run out the Familiar, and then we know there's a land on top, so that's a fine draw, so I don't think we want to play another Sage. Instead I'm gonna play the Initiate. And then next turn we can maybe ninjutsu with the familiar. And the familiar being in play is also useful in case they go for a goblin lore. We can counter that. Second land. It's a burning inquiry instead. Alright, so not gonna counter that one. Let's see what happens. Alright, we got to keep our ninja, which is the most important card, I think. And their opponents with a Hellspark, Elemental. Alright, so they just might be a mono red version of the Hollow One deck. Flame Blade Adapt triggers a bunch of times. And they're attacking for 4, sure. Don't think we block. Could block with Sage plus Drowner, I guess. I think we just take it for now. And then next turn we can play the Ninja and protect it with the Familiar in case they have a Lightning Bolt. They do have a Hollow One as well though, that's annoying. So now we actually want to draw a land, I think. So the problem here is that uh, if we Ninjutsu the Ninja, returning the familiar then we don't have the familiar in play in case they have a lightning bolt for the ninja what we could do is attack with both the sage and the drowner and just ninjutsu whichever one's not blocked that way we get to keep the familiar the other option is just playing familiar and wanderer here to set up for the ninja for next turn or even play the minister since we kind of need to get that scab ruinator in play as soon as possible since the hollow one's gonna start beating down all right so i think we go for Attack for one with the Familiar, and I'm not going to Ninjutsu here. And instead I'm going to run out a second Familiar, or I guess we might as well the Wanderer, and then play the Minister, and I'm not going to mill with the Initiate here. Boron does have a third land, and another Burning Inquiry, sure. Looks like the ninja's gone. And a bunch of street wraiths discarded. Alright, now I think I will block the flame blade adapt. Like this. Could also block with, let's say, the wanderer instead. Then we get to keep the initiate to mill ourselves when we play the familiar. The effectiveness of the wanderer and the familiar is also going down as our opponents play more lands. So we'll take four. Alright, time to find that Scab Ruinator. Sky Hussar is not bad. Play Familiar. Milling ourselves and pay one. Alright, there's a Scab Ruinator. Think we're attacking for two here. There's a Goblin Lore, we could counter it by sacking both Familiars, but I don't think we want to do that with the Sky Osar in hand. So let it resolve. Bloodcast in a Graveyard, only thing of note. And a Hollow One, and another Hollow One, alright. 
I guess we can chump with the Minister Mill ourselves on the way out. And then next turn, Sky Hussar, tap down, initiate a familiar to draw card, and then play the Scabruinator to play defense. And then we still have a, an extra blocker back as well. Seems reasonable. Mill some more creatures. So upkeep, reveal Sky Hussar, tapping these two. Could have also considered tapping both familiars since we're more likely to want to chump with the initiate here, I guess. All right, draw. Copter's not bad. Uh, so yeah, we're just casting the Scab Ruinator here. Doesn't really matter what we exile. Well, let's hope that the Ruinator can hold the fort here. And I also wanted to chump there to stay above 10 life so the Bloodcast doesn't have haste. Another goblin lore? Wow. Um, yeah, I mean, not gonna sack both familiars to counter it, so. Another Hellspark Elemental, Bloodcast comes back. I guess they could get back the Hellspark Elemental attack with everyone. So next turn we might not be able to reveal the Sky Hussar since we need every blocker we can get our hands on. Could chump, which is reasonable. Then we would only take seven. So we're not that to a lightning bolt, sure. At least we get rid of one hollow one. Hellspar goes away. So let's just untap and draw. Chase's Phantasm's a nice one. A nice 5-5, five five. and here we're not gonna pay. And then play a Copter. Just gonna play defense until we have a bigger board state. No attacks, that's good. And don't think we're revealing Sky Hussar yet. Let's untap, find a Hedron Crab. Guess we can play the Hedron Crab. And then pay one to mill ourselves. And then pay one mana to return Oboro. Play Oboro. Mill ourselves. And did we find any more Ruinators? We did not. I guess now we want to crew the Copter using the initiate attack with just a copter and let's see what do we discard guess i'm fine discarding the sky hussar here and then i'll play another hedron crab just to have more uh, blockers in play and our opponent scoops it up all right on to sideboarding against a mono red hollow one. So what do we want here? Don't have a ton of uh, great options. Spreading Seas could slightly mess with their mana. Um, Unified Will could actually be okay at countering, let's say a hollow one or a goblin lore. So that's a consideration. Don't think we want Kira. Thorn doesn't seem great since they have lots of uh, creatures as well. Although it could be okay actually, since all their burning inquiries will cost more mana and their goblin lores as well. And then Rejection can counter Hollow One, but that's it. So seems a bit narrow. So we're looking at uh, Unified Will and Thorn. Not really a combo bringing both in at the same time, but it, that might be okay. And what do we take out? Don't think we want all four Sky Hussars here. Just don't have the time. Could see shaving two Sages. So yeah, let's try this. All right, this hand seems okay. We've got the Drowner to start milling ourselves. Copter to maybe ditch the Ruinator, and then the Ruinator itself, one of our better cards. And I think we actually lead with the Judge's Familiar here, to maybe counter a Goblin Lord. Opponent says go. We'll attack for one. And then I think I just play a Copter here. And there's a Lightning Axe on the Familiar, alright. Guess uh, we'll counter it. Bloodcast in the Graveyard. Perhaps they wanted to uh, play their land afterwards, after playing the Lightning Axe. So here we can play the Initiates. Which can crew the Copter. Play the Familiar. Pay one to mill ourselves.
and I think I'll ditch the Ruinator here. Or we can ditch the Phantasm, so next turn we can just cast the Ruinator. But if we can attack again with the Copter, we can ditch the Phantasm and then cast the Ruinator from our uh, Graveyard as well. I guess we'll discard the Phantasm for now. The problem with discarding Phantasm is if our opponent, let's say, has some Graveyard hate, then they might be able to get rid of our Graveyard and the Ruinator is useless while the Phantasm might still be able to interact with the opponent's graveyard. Pyroclasm, that's annoying. Um, guess I'll counter it. Make them uh, spend all their mana here. So they also kill the Initiate. But we have the Scab Ruinator, which we can now play main phase to crew the Copter with. Bloodcast comes back. And a Wanderer as well. So we can actually play the Wanderer first to crew the copter, then maybe discard the Ruinator to cast it from our graveyard, which is a bit better value. Yeah, I'll uh, ditch the Ruinator. Could get punished by Surgical Extraction here, I guess, but I don't expect my opponent to have it if they're on a more budget build of the deck. Get an Island, cast Ruinator. All right, so we're not in a bad spot here. Got a Ruinator in play. Got a Copter going. Sage plus Fetch Land. Looting Resolves. Discards a second Pyroclasm. And there's Goblin Lore, which will let Resolve. Let's see how many Hollow Ones they have. All right, looks like they don't have any. And our opponent scoops it up, so we managed to beat Mono Red Hollow One onto the next one. All right, we're on the play. And this hand seems acceptable. We've got our Hedron Crab, which is one of our more important cards. Uh, we are missing the second land, but we have Oboro, which we can always use to trigger landfall. It's actually interesting what we play on turn one here. I think we just go with the Hedron Crab. Could play the Sage to try and find a second land. I think playing the Hedron Crab here is fine. Up against an Ink Moth Nexus into Ornithopter, so this is Affinity. We might be in a bit of trouble here, so we need to find our Scab Ruinator as quickly as possible to have a flying blocker. Alright, we did find a second land, luckily. I think we play the Sage first. And then we can use our land drop to essentially mill away three cards from the top four. So we get to keep one of them. Alright, so we can go for the second Hedron Crab. We can keep the Flooded Strand, which is also pretty appealing with Hedron Crab. Or we can keep the ninja, start drawing some extra cards. So if we keep the ninja, I think we definitely want to play the familiar here so that we can have an evasive creature to attack with. Although our opponent, I guess, has the ornithopter, which does just block our familiar as well. So the ninja might not be the best idea. So maybe we're better off keeping the flooded strand to mill ourselves more with the first hedron crab. Flooded strand goes on the bottom, essentially. And then we also get to mill... Lots of creatures in case we find our uh, payoff card here. And I will still play the familiar, I think, just to have that flying blocker out. Say go, and then next turn on upkeep we might also reveal the Hussar tapping the Sage and the Hedron Crab. So we're definitely doing a lot of things here. Just need to find our payoff card before our opponents puts up too many cards themselves. Springleaf Drum. Into Hangerback Walker, alright, that's actually fine. So let's untap, and then upkeep reveal Sky Hussar tapping these two. So we draw our fetch land, and then an unknown card, which is just an island. Here we can play the Drowner Initiate, and then play Minister, paying one extra for the Initiate to mill ourselves. Don't mind that. Could also consider getting a Hallowed Fountain, since we might actually cast the Sky Hussar with this draw. So, sure. Let's play the Flooded Strand first, mill ourselves. Should have probably done this first in case we did find the Scab Ruinator. That way we could have cast the Scab Ruinator right now. So I should have not played the Initiate yet. We'll get the Hallowed Fountain. The life can definitely matter against an Affinity deck. Alright, and there's a Scab Ruinator, so we could have had a Scab Ruinator in play this turn if we wanted to. But this is still okay. Mill ourselves, pay one.
and then might as well attack for one, I think, with the familiar. Could keep it on defense in case they put a plating on their Ink Moth Nexus. I think we want to get our damage in while we can. Try to close out the game as quickly as we can. There's a Blink Moth Nexus as well. And Arcbound Ravager, alright, that's scary, since that combines nicely with the Hangerback Walker to make lots of artifacts. And the second Ravager combines nicely with the first one, since if they sacrifice a Ravager to another Ravager, they get an extra counter. So your opponent can do lots of things with their Ravagers now, but uh, Scab Ruinator should still be big enough to not care too much about it. So let's reveal Skyosar, tapping Hedron Crab and I guess the Initiate. And we draw another Scab Ruinator, nice. And a Jace's Phantasm. So now we might start milling our opponent. So play land, mill our opponent. Alright, they actually have a Hardened Scales version of the deck. The Hangerback Walker now makes more sense with all the plus one plus one counter synergies. So we can play Scab Ruinator, mill our opponent for two with the Initiate. Or we can play Scab Ruinator and the Phantasm and then don't mill with the Initiate. I think I would rather play the Scab Ruinator and then uh, doesn't really matter what we exile and then mill with the initiates on our opponent that way if they have let's say a walking ballista we don't run out the phantasm while it's still a 1-1 so Scab Ruinator cast from the graveyard first might as well do that first before playing the one in hand so another hanger bag goes to the graveyard no point in attacking with the familiar when they have the ornithopter to block with. So we have a pretty big scab ruinator now that we can get back a couple times. And there's hardened scales, now that's scary since now all the ravagers start going crazy. So if they have a walking ballista we might just be dead here. And there's a walking ballista. I didn't do the math here but our opponent can sacrifice lots of things, add lots of counters everywhere. And we're going to be in a bit of trouble after everything is said and done. Opponent's fine playing defense, we'll mill them with the Minister. Untap, and might as well reveal while our creatures are still alive. Alright, another Phantasm. So I think I like attacking with the Scab Ruinator. Sure, our opponent can block and sack, but they'll be able to do that no matter what. So let's attack. See what they do here. They just take it, alright. And then second main, let's mill with the Minister first, so that the Jace's Phantasms are bigger, so they don't die to the Walking Ballista. And then play Jace's Phantasm, I'm not gonna mill anyone. And I think we play the second Ruinator over the second Phantasm here, just to be more mana efficient. So we made a bunch of five powered flyers. Let's see if our opponent can kill us through them. It's uh, very much possible here with the Hardened Scales and Double Ravager. Opponent's got one card left in hand. So most of what they have going on is on the board. And they're gonna activate the Hanger back once again. Five counters. Yeah, we might just be dead to this Walking Ballista. And they could also at any point sacrifice the hangar back to make lots of uh, flying blockers, so they're not going to die to our flyers anytime soon. So our opponent might be doing some math right now, figuring out how many counters they can get on the Ballista. Looks like they might have a play after all. Alright, they're just pumping the Ballista. So four counters there. Seems like we should be dead here. Yep, they're going for it. So sacrifice hangar back. Put two counters on the Ravager, make five Thopters. And then for each Thopter they sacrifice, they add two counters on the Ravager. So that's ten counters, thirteen. So yeah, we should be dead to the Ballista here. So I'm just gonna let the opponent go through the motions just to show what happens. So they're sacrificing all their Thopter tokens to the first Ravager. Which gets two counters thanks to Hardened Scales. And then they can sacrifice one Ravager to the other one, move the counters with Modular to the Walking Ballista, and that's going to have enough counters to be able to kill us in one big shot. Alright, so Walking Ballista for 22. I'm going to assume our opponent uh, knows how to kill us here. So they got a 26-26 Walking Ballista. At least we also got to do our thing here. 
All right, let's go to sideboarding, where I think we want the gut shots, as it can maybe snipe an early Ravager. Ceremonious Rejection is a no-brainer. Unified Will is probably okay here as well, just to be able to counter a Walking Ballista. So Judge is Familiar and Mausoleum Wanderer are pretty weak. Guess we'll leave in one. Still nice with Ninjutsu. So I guess the Ninja also gets a bit worse if we take these out. But uh, they don't really counter anything from the opponent, so they're just 1-1 flyers. Alright, this seems fine. And I don't think we can keep a zero lander despite having a gut shot. Another one, that's rough. It's a nice hand, but with no lands I don't think we can keep. So let's go to five. Alright, this hand's reasonable. And Sage, given that we're on the play, don't think we want to keep that one. So turn one we can play the Minister. And hope they don't have a one drop so we can ninja them and get back some card advantage. We're definitely going to need it. Blink Moth Nexus, sure. Into Ornithopter, that's unfortunate, so now the ninja plan's not gonna work, but we still have the Copter as a play, so we still get to do something here. Spring Leaf Drum as well, maybe they tap out for something that lets us attack with the Minister, like an Arcbound Worker. Not a Spring Leaf Drum, alright. So the ninja plan is back online. Let's draw. Hedron Crab's a nice one, but... We have to play the ninja here, I think. Attack. And ninja to the ninja. And we even get uh, two more energy when we replay the minister. All the value. Alright, picked up an island, so next turn we can go Hedron Crab, Island, Smuggler Sculptor. And now our opponent needs to maybe keep back a blocker for the ninja. Looks like they kept uh, one lander with double Springleaf Drum, and Steel Overseer is pretty scary here, so then hopefully we can draw into a gut shot. And there's the Arcbound Worker, which the opponent might be happy to block with to deny us a card. Alright, Hallowed Fountain. I think we continue with our plan. I guess we could have done the second main after attacking with the Ninja. But who knows, maybe by milling ourselves we draw into the perfect card now with the ninja. Alright. No gut shots milled, so that's good. Let's attack and hope they don't block. Alright, opponent's taking it. Come on, gut shot, one time. Alright, just a minister. Uh, second main. Maybe we should just be playing double minister, mill ourselves as much as possible to try to find our scab ruinator. I can buy that. Say go. And uh, it's going to be scary every time a Steel Overseer untaps. So let's see how many artifacts they can dump into play. Hardened Scales, oof. It's not what we wanted to see here. So now it's as if our opponent had two Steel Overseers in play. And the Arcbound Ravager as well. Yep, I think this game's uh, close to over. All our opponent needs now is a Walking Ballista. But even without it, they can still kill us with damage. So we need to take to the skies very quickly here, and Scab Ruinator might not be good enough. Alright, Jace's Phantasm. I guess that could be a 5-5 flyer here if we mill our opponent. The ninja's definitely not attacking anymore. I guess we just play the Copter. Play the Phantasm and then play Fountain milling our opponent. Looks like our opponent is also playing with uh, Cranial Plating. So they've got a bit of a hybrid between Affinity and the Hardened Scales deck, since I don't think the Hardened Scales deck typically plays with Cranial Plating. And there's a Walking Ballista, which is going to wrap things up here. They might just be able to kill us here. Activate Blink Moth. Pretty sure we're dead here. So Steel Overseer puts counters everywhere. Well, our opponent did have a pretty good draw here. So the, the first game was a bit more competitive at least. So we can make the Phantasm into a 5-5 now, but that's not going to matter. I guess we can do that now that they have 7 cards in their graveyard. Alright, 
All right, Jace's Phantasm, now a 5-5 officially. Arcbound Worker Modular Trigger goes to the Walking Ballista. So Arcbound Ravager with 16 plus 1 plus 1 counters, sacrifice the Steel Overseer. 18 counters, sacrifice Ravager to itself and move 19 counters to the Walking Ballista here. And that's 29-29 uh, Walking Ballista, which is enough to kill us here. All right, GG's. So not the most successful run with our mono blue deck here, but uh, we did manage to string together some nice synergies, make some 5-5 Phantasms, and uh, get some Scab Ruinators back from the graveyard. So I want to thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this gameplay, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for supporting the channel, and you can do so yourself as well over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd, where you get cool rewards for supporting the channel, as well as getting us closer to our goals, where with every goal reached, we will release an additional weekly series, so if you want to see more content, Patreon is the place to go.